You are listening to the questionnaire. Say that again. You're listening to the questionnaire. I've just started right here for your ears, for your eyes. The questionnaire. Get your comic on. Poke it up, poke it up, poke it up. Mom, Mom. shut up. Why does that not surprise me from Bendis and Michael? It just the book started out so rude. It really did. I can't take that. I can't wait to just take the rest of that. I found that at my local library. Library, right after yeah. I had Michael Oming on the show. It was a pleasure. And ladies and gentlemen, this, this is the questionnaire. It's that new questionnaire, right? Podcast, right? I am the Unknown Factor, a.k.a. that Wade Wilson of Hip Hop. But as always, we are not on Hip Hop today. Today, well, today we're like going into quite a few things. Where, uh, people had some life issues, whatever, you know. Heart gets pierced sometimes and, you know kids get upset and that's just how it happens and what you gonna do man i didn't have ninja total to help me right but i did for the first time on the show have someone that lives in the same state that i did and like the fact that it took this many episodes before i got somebody that lives in the same state like i have had so many canadians on this show and finally in season two Episode three, there's like 83 episodes of season one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but if you want the PG version, don't go watch it. Um, this is this is the new questionnaire, just to clarify, right? Right? But that many episodes, right? So today, with that, we might be uh, welcome to a few more people here later, just so everyone knows, right? But for this moment, yeah, it's Kevin Smith in the house. How you doing, man? Hey, gang. I'm doing well. Um, Thanks for having me. Always, man. It's a pleasure. And it's yeah. funny. It's funny to me that it's only now that you're coming on the show. Yeah, I mean, in yeah. so many a ways. Of especially, boys. D- dude, we go to the same comic shop, and yeah. like, I think it's that. Yeah, that's it's one of the few I shop at. So, like, I I mean, I I live in a uh, Fountain Square here in Indianapolis. So, like, I'll go to hero house which is literally like right down the street from me it's about, i could i could walk there in five minutes or like i'll drive to rob's uh or well formerly rob's comic book university now mages but on my eli so uh yeah it's that's one of the shops i go to pretty frequently shopping in greenwood a lot oh yeah and shit oh. Shout out to Mage's man, Dave, over there, who is a regular co-host. And will be yes. popping in as one of the rotating co-hosts over here on the show. He's just not on this episode. Our co-host hopefully will show up later, as well as another mystery guest. I mean, who was the one that I booked in the first place, not even you, which is even funnier. That to finally get somebody yeah. on from the state that I'm in, Gavin, I hit up somebody else who is not from the state I'm from. And right. then they're like, yeah, we should talk about her pierce let me get gavin on and i'm yeah, like yeah, wait yeah. gavin smith funny story rich <laughs> yeah 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 rich is great yeah it's it's funny i i uh yeah like i like i said I, I didn't know you were from here initially until like today when we started talking about it but uh yeah it's funny it's funny these little coincidences like you said i, I think i saw you were from brazil and like which is right near Linton, which I've spent a lot of time in Linton. My uncle owned, a, uh, my, well, my dad grew up there. My uncle lives there now, uh, still, I guess. Uh, he ran the diner that's in like the downtown central Linton area. And then he owned Smith Printing Company for a while until he sold that um, and then retired. Is that little Amish restaurant still open? Maybe. You know the one it, I'm the, talking uh, I think so. The Amish, is it like, trying to think of where it is. It was like, oh, dude, I don't know. That's about the only time I ever went up to Linton was to hit that restaurant up when we were real young as a family. We went there, ate, Uh and bounced. Like, we do that, like, after church and stuff. Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm not totally sure. Um, I haven't been down to Linton in a number of years now because... Uh, I, I was actually, whenever I'd, uh, uh, after my grandma passed away, like 2013, I haven't been down there as much. But then my uncle, when he still owned the print shop, was making my prints for me. So I'd make an excuse to go down there and grab lunch with him and, like, get some stuff made and take it to conventions and stuff. And it was very convenient having an uncle running a print shop for a while for me. 
Yeah, I could see that as a bit of a bonus with what you. Oh, it was great. Yeah. yeah. And and man, yeah, all my prints there made fairly reasonable price. Good stuff. You get that family discount. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore, but yeah, that's showbiz. Well, I think you're probably doing a bit more now compared to you are you were then, anyways, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can afford uh, it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still, I'm still all about a good deal. I found a new guy that's actually pretty close to me that, that gets me a pretty good deal. But um, definitely, what I'm doing is on a higher level than what I was doing back then. Um, I think I was working on uh, this book called The Accelerators for a long time, uh, and like I would get stuff made up of that and stuff. And now, um, yeah, now now my prints are consist of mostly of the covers that I do uh, for whatever book I'm working on at the time. So um, yeah, like a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff, a lot of Godzilla. Uh, recently, I've started I've started doing Godzilla covers, and um, what else am I doing? Um, I don't know. It's got a lot coming out. It's getting it's getting to the point where it's all blending together. I understand, but I love to hear it from his yeah. from an art. Like, because I understand yeah. this with the show, it's like this is all just blending together. But to hear it from the perspective yeah. of that, it's like I don't even remember what cover I drew yesterday. It's it's kind of comforting <laughs> in a way, and it's really funny on top of that, man. So I just gotta. It's, add it's you kind of it. funny because oh, oh no, go ahead. I was gonna say it's kind of on that subject. Like, like uh, Rich and I got an email today about the last issue of Heart Piercer that's going to be coming out uh i think in september maybe or august i don't remember but like we got the colors in for the last issue because we had to hire a new colorist for the last issue and i was looking at it today and i was like oh man i kind of don't remember drawing some of this already because i've drawn so much in the interim uh since i finished the last issue that it's just like oh wow i oh i remember that page cool i'm glad i did that <laughs> you know is it weird as an artist that it, because I assume it used to be in the past, you remembered most of the pieces that you drew for a while. And oh, they sure, yeah. 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 Now, when you get to the point where they are blending like that, and when you get a book back and you're like, oh yeah, I drew that. What's what's the difference yeah. in the feeling than you got when you were just starting? And it was like, yes, I drew that. Um, uh... I mean, I, I I think the feeling's still there of like the excitement of oh, right. like seeing something you drew in print, like I, that never goes away, or just like getting a box of books in the mail or something like that, or like seeing a book on the shelf. That's always like there's always a thrill there. And sometimes, but like I said, like because it, I'm doing so much now, like it is sort of starting to be like, oh yeah, I can't, I forgot I did that. Like and and like it's crazy because like. The amount of time spent on each piece is like a dedicated day and a half or two days sometimes or three. And it's <laughs> like, you know, just kind of forgetting chunks of my life here and there. And like, um, and it's funny and like a lot and a lot of it's just coming so much easier too. now that I'm like professionally, I've been doing this like 13 years. Um, how much. I think mentally easier it is on me doing a page because like it is sort of um i guess uh it's it's flowing out of me more now that i've been at this for as long as i have and but i remember back when i was uh going to school for this when i, I went to the joe kubert school and um I remember how hard I would like stress on assignments. Like I was just like kill myself on some of these. Like I remember there was one time I was doing this uh, Spider-Man homework assignment for like, I think Fernando Ruiz's class. And that's the thing, like, I think it's Fernando Ruiz's class. Might've been like Adam Kubert's class or Kim DeMolder's, whatever. But like, I, I know for a fact, I stayed up for two days straight, like did not sleep for 48 hours. And then like, finished it up like that morning and then went into class because it was due that day like right into the portfolio review and like as soon as my pages got reviewed like we, we would all like get up gather around like the chalkboard we take our pages to the chalkboard and like 
as soon as my pages got reviewed, I like sat down in a chair and I like passed out in the chair while we were all still standing around the board. Because <laughs> like, I was just like, oh man. But like, that's the thing. Like, I, I remember, it, I couldn't even tell you what those pages look like now. <laughs> like, but I, but I know I just like absolutely destroyed myself working on them. Um, that's, it's the yeah. fact that someone could bring you your own pages. And you wouldn't remember them is yeah it it shows that you've reached a great point as far as what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's happening. Yeah. yeah. You're obviously doing great work. Just I mean, just the sheer demand shows that man. Yeah. And the book you just got picked up for, which is gonna be yeah. even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles One starts over. And yeah, you're, you're the like, alpha issue, yeah. Yeah, and then you know, it's not like you're you're just working with some writer too, from what I hear, right? I'm, I'm working with uh, Tom Waltz on that. Tom's awesome. Uh, no. he, he wrote the first hundred issues of the Team and T series, and uh, Jason Aaron's going to be in the book as well. It's his debut yeah, just, issue. Just a couple writers on Turtles. <laughs> yeah, just some guys, right? Just some uh, guys, you know, they do like they did some things. Like you know, one of them's wrote the yeah, Turtles yeah. for. You know, ever and then and Jason and did Google his name, right? Yeah, she's just working. Yeah, right. Just some guys. Nah, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to be able to like. I, I wish I could work on on Jason's stuff, but uh, it, it's it is cool to be able to share a credit page with him because um, I'm a big fan of Jason's. Like I I love uh, his creator own stuff, um, especially like scalped and the goddamned was a fantastic book um and um you know th those are some like my favorite independent books he's worked on i haven't read a ton of his marvel stuff but i i sure it's just as good i i've, I've read a lot of it yeah yeah I've, i heard his store stuff is great yeah i've read a lot of of jason Aaron's stuff hey there hey. he is Really sorry. Uh, Everything so shuffled around and Rich Duke showed up. Yeah. Like out of nowhere. It was magic. Did you see it? I stalled for you as long as I could. <laughs> no, no. Yo, Gavin, let's be honest. My kid stalled for him as long as he could. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's good to be here with both of you. Uh, Rich, how you been, man? Coming on the show. Hi. Wait. Wait, I, I need you to tell me though, is this your third or fourth time on here? This is number three because I did one solo one and then one uh like uh we call it Pancon thing with uh but weren't you uh, on with Alex? Yeah, no. I maybe I was. So I don't I, I don't know if it's my third or fourth, but who's counting at this point? So. This is, it's funny because this kind of like ties into the conversation we were just having. Uh because yeah. like we we were talking about like it's getting to the point now, like I have or like we we I guess both of us have been at this for so long. Sometimes you see something that you've written or you've drawn. I'm just like, oh, I don't remember doing that, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like but like oh, I'm, I'm glad it turned out okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and I kind of like these interviews too. Like, I don't know if I've done this four times, three times. Yeah, it might it might be four then, because there was that that big one with um, Hannibal Taboo is on it, and uh, yeah, Frank Kennedy and Mike Ruth and yourself, yeah. and mm -hmm. we're talking about mythology. And yeah, and unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, I hope Heather's dog's okay. I never found out. I mean, I, I didn't see anything bad about her dog, like to where it was in bad, bad shape. And I, so I assume nothing happened. But yeah, the other. Oh, Heather, yeah. 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 Um, I feel like we'd all know if Heather's dog was. In yeah. Shape. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. pretty much was yeah. my thought. I'm like, I'm like, I never heard any pot. Yeah. I was like, but, you know, I never heard any bad news either. And I feel like, right. like, so that's, that's. I think no yeah. news is good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Shout out to Heather Antos. Uh, go check out. You know, that's the if you want a non PG version, go check out her quest. Like I said, this is the new question here. We're keeping it all nice, except Gavin over here mentioning titles. I'm gonna have to beep out. Oh really? Mm -hmm. 
I feel like that's the exception, right? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Is it? Like, how much does that fly? When you said that, when you said that, my my, dude, my uh, brain said the exact same thing when you said that. And I was like, and then I was like, is that a problem? I don't know if that's a problem. I don't know. I'm I'm curious. Like, is it an issue if we're naming the name of a book? But it's actually, that is a, I don't know how specific they take all this crap, man. You know, the world is weird, right? And yeah. and Rich, you very much created an odd world for Gavin to draw as well, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did a, he did a really great job with it, though. Um, I yeah. was uh, just like looking at some uh, some stuff today for one of the later issues, and uh, it's just yeah, it came together really beautifully. I think so too, especially since like, especially in the last issue and I was kind of looking through it, I was like, oh man, this world's kind of wacky and I kind of love it. Um, Like, I feel like that, that whole middle section, uh, we're being very vague here because it's a book that doesn't come out, especially this issue. I don't think it comes out till like August or September or something like that, but it's like, yeah, yeah. Don't give spoilers that deep. That would be terrible. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, no, I'm being, I know May I'm being purposely vague, but like yeah. the middle May- section of like issue four fucking or, or freaking slap. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gavin's gonna good. have me like me out. You're gonna have to Gavin, beep me out. I, I really am gonna have to beep out Gavin. I'm just gonna edit you yeah. out of the interview, Gavin. Like well, Gavin swore too like, much. Beep. Rich is gonna end up <laughs> swearing too much because he's gonna get used because he's like this is the questionnaire. You can say whatever you want on here. That's the new questionnaire. And leave me alone. Uh, the, Sorry. <laughs> now, you said that, and you made me lose my question, Gavin, that I had. Because I was like... Sorry. <laughs> I'm very distracting. More editing. Right. Right. What's this process been like? Like I said, because I know the book, the first issue is going to drop May 15th, if memory serves me properly on all of that. Okay, I was pretty sure that it did. Um, yeah, gonna make me log on to mages and place that on my pool, whatever. Yeah, um, and you've got a four issue run, Rich. What was your initial idea with this story? Because it's, um, oh man, my kid, my kid had an issue, and right before this started, even though I'd read this description like three times, my brain, you're gonna say three words of it, Rich, and I'm gonna know the rest, uh, because. But oh, son of a son of a the eyebound did it. Got myself yeah. there. Um, so yeah, it's it's basically about this uh, warrior. She's uh, her name's Atala, and she's a huntress, and uh, she's yeah. kind of dedicated her life to hunting these uh, magical beasts. Okay, uh, that threaten so, humanity. Yeah, like yeah. her. her like her lord has been sending her on these missions, and uh, at the start of the story, she's like just conquered the last one. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, and then she finds out that uh, she's actually been betrayed, and uh, all these beasts that she's been slaying have been the one thing keeping even darker things at bay. So she was kind of like tricked into um, removing like all the things that were holding back like vampires and werewolves and all kinds of other monsters um that then basically like over on the world so uh the story is really about her you know she's seeking revenge for being betrayed but she also kind of has to come to terms with her part in uh in the world like uh being so so messed up because of her actions See, that's very intriguing because, like, the, the synopsis online is pretty much that Arcadia sees a warrior that she's, uh, she eliminates dark forces and it ends up that what she thought she was doing was reversed. You reveal a little bit more than the synopsis does as far as that. I think it's very intriguing the way it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Gavin, man, from going then, so you're going from drawing her, fighting that situation to where it obviously turns worse. When you initially got these scripts mm-hmm. from Rich, like how, how many did you yeah. get? Did you get just issue one, or did you get them all at once? I had a, <laughs> I had a half of issue one uh, when we first got. Well, we were talking, and like we, Rich and I have been friends for a long time, uh, just running into each other, and 
I, I forget what like the catalyst was. I think it was like I did. Richard asked me to do like a pinup for uh, Wailing Blade. Yeah, and like we, uh, like we Kenny Porter and I did a piece for it, like where Kenny wrote like a whole prose section, and I illustrated a pinup that went with it. And essentially, Rich acted as an editor in that case. Um, and then we were kind of talking, and we we like each other so we were just like you know like and we, and we like each other's work too which is even better you know because i've worked with uh people before where only one of those was the case um <laughs> so but uh like you know we we uh we just said you know we should we should kick around a couple ideas you know, we had and rich had uh this and another idea on hand and and uh heart piercer was the one that really caught my eye because it like really had like uh, seeds of a really interesting world um, and and just like cool things to draw. And it was, it seemed like something I wanted to do and it was something I'd never drawn before. Uh, so very unique challenge that I, I, I like to challenge myself. I don't want to be known as just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but, uh, so so we we started putting that together. I think I'm not sure if like you had the first like half of the issue written yet or just like outlined. But real quick, uh, real quick. Oh, I yeah. don't mean to cut off, but there was a, another quick edit. Oh, no problem. Suddenly, real quick, the co-host jumped in. Laverne, how you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the wonders of technology. Everyone's <laughs> hey, it's it's cool, man. Look, me and Gavin. We're just straight chopping it up for like 30 minutes, I think, before even anyone yeah. showed up or the interview started. So like if it, there's there's probably some hopefully if I can get everything edited to the degree that I need to, there's some things you can go check out on the Patreon that will not be up on the YouTube because they ain't PG. Uh <laughs> A lot of full hey. frontal. Yeah. Um, hey, Gavin, don't yeah, tell them the secrets of what I did. Yeah. All right. Like. But it's so Laverne is in the house, man. Hey Laverne. Nice hey, to Laverne. Laverne. hey guys. Me too. Uh, I'm I'm dreading editing this episode already, gentlemen. I won't even lie. Um but back to what we were talking about real quick. As far as you challenging yourself, I think I think that's very interesting. And I think you can't see that in your bulk of work. Yeah. But I think it's very interesting in that that Rich, um what I have read from you was I, I i never like and i did i haven't taken the time to go through your whole catalog i'm sorry um it's all good. don't, don't be You'll mad at me but i don't have You'll get there one day huh is, is somebody gonna like yeah man if somebody gives me the superpower of some kind of screwy time manipulation where i don't age <laughs> i'll get to every comic i want to read and that's how that will work otherwise i'll never get to read every comic i want to read just because yeah, there's too many, but I think it's interesting man, because, like I said, um, I've seen a post from you and you said you're going back into fantasy because it's really what you started with. And I look at um, Sea of Sorrow specifically. <laughs> right. Yeah. OK, I've got that name. Right? I had to check that in my brain. Um, and there is a little bit of fantasy there, but it's very much modern. So I'm curious because I've seen books where you do tend to get into things of a darker origin right mm -hmm. and it seems like you're very much doing this within this book with just bringing in a bunch of other things that i i personally haven't ever seen you bring it into a story what made you want to flip it like that yeah well i mean like i really like when i say like i started out like the first comic i ever did is called uh gutter magic and i've been self-publishing that for a while from like like the early 2010s and then IDW picked it up and it came out in, in 2016 and that was really kind of like um like it was like a fantasy story but like set in like uh like a modern version in New York so it was kind of like you know walking down Fifth Avenue and there's like dragons and uh, uh orcs and things like that like running around um it was a really fun book um but uh then my second book was called uh, wailing blade and that was also like 
very, very heavily influenced by like sword and sorcery. So even though it was like kind of a science fiction tale, uh, like the vibe is very much like like Conan or or like a He Man kind of thing, you know, where it's like you know uh, guys running around in loincloths, uh, but also uh, you know with like weird technology like running around there. Um, and then like as far as I like, if you had asked me back then, like those are the kind of books I would have like just been writing like you know like if you were like what kind of like what do you like to write i'd be like oh sci-fi fantasy that's like that's my thing um then i uh i started doing research i didn't really have an idea like i just kind of wanted to do like uh i felt like prison break was like a cool story so so i was like you know i, I want to do like a prison break story uh so i just started researching all these like historical prison breaks to like to see like what would spark an idea and I started reading about the Russian gulag and like the more I read about it, the more I was like, you know, like I could see myself like just really using this, but not as a science fiction fantasy thing. I was like, this could be like a really cool horror story. And that's where I wrote, uh, wrote of bones, which is the book I wrote right before Sea of Sorrows, which you mentioned. And then like, I never really thought of myself as like a horror writer. Like I knew I like, I always was like a horror fan, but never really thought of it as like something I was going to write, but I wrote Road of Bones. It was really well received. <laughs> Everyone was like, you're a great horror writer. You should keep writing horror. So I was like, all right. So I wrote Sea of Sorrows right after that. And that was kind of like building on everything I did in Road of Bones and, and like learning, like, you know, what I learned about writing horror. Then I wrote Breath of Shadows after that. And uh, so I just did this kind of like detour into like just doing like kind of like straight up like horror stories, uh, which I actually like love doing. And, and I think it's like, you know, sort of going to be in my in my repertoire from now on. But I'm always kind of like looking back, looking how to get back into, you know, the stuff that I originally got into writing to do, which is, you know, like fantasy, science fiction and like exploring like wild settings and creating worlds um and i think um the different thing about heart piercer from like gutter magic or wailing blade is that like it's a much darker world like and i'm bringing like i think like when i when i was writing like ideas for like the setting i was bringing a lot of like kind of like horror sensibility into it so even though it is kind of like a you know, Game of Thrones or Dungeons and Dragons y type type world, um, there is definitely that like darker element to it as well. I mean, it definitely sounds like it. Real quick, I just gotta say I had to get to that question. I just gotta say co host in the house, Laverne Krasinski. Man, did I get your last name right, Laverne? I did, didn't I? Didn't I? No. <laughs> it's phonetic. Well, apparently, I don't know phonics, but I can rap. So that's a whole different point altogether. It's, it's, it's Kinjerski. Kinjer. Why am I? Yeah, just look at the DZ and think it's a J, and you're close. If I was going to go all Polish on you, it would be Kinjerski. <laughs> if you said Kinjerski, I would probably remember it more properly. I just want to point out. Oh, because Kinjerski? It, Maybe I just can't say it right, Laverne, at all. But I love you, and you know it. And it's a pleasure to have you back on the show as a co-host, right? I just had to get that question out to Rich real quick, man. So as a fellow industry, you know, creator in this field, man, I don't know, Laverne. Just take a random question because this this is like this this interview is going to be assembled, and that's just how it is. Sometimes well, the just, just have to come together one by one. I was just thinking about Rich, what he was saying about writing his fantasy stuff and that, and then people are telling him that he's writing horror, and it's it's. Uh, um, I mean, there there there's there's times when your your career basically is telling you what you're going to do next, and you don't necessarily plan it, but I mean, and it grows grows out of life, um, and and uh, so when when he when he was given that opportunity, you you went into horror, but you were saying that you left on your own, you probably wouldn't have done that? Yeah, probably not. 
Um, I mean, I think like when, when I like Road of Bones was just sort of like an experiment to me. It was like, you know, can I write horror? I'm, will I will I begin to get at it? You know, mm -hmm. uh, luckily I got hooked up with I hooked up with uh, Alex Cormack, who's like a great horror artist and just draws like things that creep me out, <laughs> um, even 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 uh, knowing what he's gonna draw. So um, so <laughs> like that book was like like I said like really well received and. Uh, and it was just sort of like, oh, okay, like I can do this and maybe I, let me see what else I can do in this, you know, with these like kind of sensibilities. So no, that's that's great. I, I don't think you I don't think anybody should censor themselves. And and I I think if the idea comes to you uh and you go with it, that I mean you just grow more. Yeah. And, and I think that's something, man, you said censors, right? I mean, like, you feel like I'm censoring everybody because they turned PG. <laughs> so I'm like, don't need the questionnaire freedom of speech anymore. I, I, It is. You can say what you want. Just please don't make me beep you. It's more editing on my behalf. That's really, that's really more than anything why I don't want people to swear because it's already a lot of editing and I don't need more. Like, like I know you guys hate, like, when an editor comes back with notes, like, when there's a ton of them, don't you just want to look at the editor and just, like, like death glare. Come on, dude. yeah. Well, I, th I think uh, so. The, so the default, the default now is just crap. <laughs> Crud. I curse like Ned Flanders. Uh, no, I that man. Now, wait, I, Laverne, I'm gonna make you host the rest of this interview and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna have Laverne because I know he can do it. He's a good gentleman, you know. Y'all can go check out. Everything he's done in the past as well, like I said, with the questionnaire, it's it's been a trip. Um, but, but whatever, man. Comics are for everyone. Why shouldn't the show be Laverne? Yeah. Uh, I, I I often go. I don't know about you guys, but uh, there'll be times when I'm at a convention and somebody will come up with their kids in that, and I'm like scrambling <laughs> to find something that their kids can look at. Oh yeah. There's most of that stuff that I've got, you know. Uh, no, nope, not going there. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got a good amount of books like that. It's just like, well, yeah. maybe maybe you shouldn't check out my uh you should not check out my martial arts book that's basically blood sport. That's probably not for them. Like I hear the Ninja Turtle book will, will do just fine for them. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I, uh... I, I had uh, I have a, a few I had a few, but I'm finding that I'm getting less and less of those as I'm doing stuff like um I just uh, finished a book at, at Dark Horse called Satan Swarm and mm -hmm. uh, there's no way that somebody wants their kids looking through that without them looking through <laughs> it first. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I certainly do want people to be aware that when they're growing out and getting their kids comics yeah, there are certain comics you shouldn't get your kids there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's plenty on the shelves that like your children should not read. I mean, a rich. Uh, it, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, censorship. Well, yeah. look, I mean, okay. I don't know, man. I, I was I, reading the Lobos books as a kid, and I turned out. Okay, what a okay. okay. Look, I was reading those. Oh books no, I'm like, gonna get. I'm gonna get blamed for this now, aren't I? I'm. I'm totally blaming you for all this, Laverne. I love you, all though. Lobo know that, stuff, man. Yeah. Um. Oh, were you on Lobo back then? Uh, all right. Everybody forgets the colorist. <laughs> well, which, which which Lobo were you on? Were you on the ongoing or were you on like the minis? Uh, I was working on uh, Legion or L-E-G-I-O-N. And okay. then when it, kicked over, when it kicked over to Lobo uh, with Simon, it was, uh, uh, I was coloring that. Oh, right on. I bet I have a ton of your work then. And I did, uh, and I did um, the Lobo's back stuff. And okay. then, I, uh, I and then that. I love some that. stuff that I, I can't talk about or I'll probably get blacklisted uh, <laughs> uh, made Simon and I move away from DC for a while. Mm. Uh, but then I ended up going back with Keith doing the uh, uh, infanticide. Yeah, I love that book. Cool. Well, cool. This is great. Well, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I, I just very recently, there. funny, I, uh, like, 
what we were talking about, like being appropriate for kids or not. Like yeah. it reminds me of when my, uh, my son was in uh, kindergarten and the teacher found out that like I write comics and she's like, oh, do you want to give a presentation to the class? And like, you can like read one of your comics. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> no. I honestly don't think I have a comic that I'd be comfortable showing in kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, but, but, but then that year I wrote, I wrote Superman. And then I was like, all right, like, I know this is coming out. We could do it for first uh, grade. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this one's pretty tame, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I most... usually get booked for like the most violent books ever. So like, Ninja That's Turtles was like a nice, like, relaxing, like, yeah. okay, I can like, I can set up with this, and kids will come and they'll buy it, and it'll be great, and parents just... feel comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good at drawing violence. I mean, what can I say? That's I, I am <laughs> starting to get the hang of it. I... I literally have a page here where some of the knocking someone's what, out uh, that. where where does uh, where does your influence come from for like uh uh in violence i mean what are you looking at are you looking back at like uh, uh old creepy and eerie stuff like or rights in particularly or um a little rights in um but like some of it comes from just like movies in general uh so like i, I mentioned earlier i did like a martial arts book so like i went on uh i mean as a kid i grew up watching a lot of old school like martial arts movies and stuff so um like a lot of shaw brothers and uh and like bruce lee movie stuff and uh van damme movies love them or hate them i love those uh, uh oh, no. so it's all good yeah and uh so like i i don't know like i was always like drawn to it and like uh do you, you have know, a like, martial arts drawn to violence but you know drawn to Cool Do you have a martial arts background? A little, yeah, yeah. I well, I got a black belt in taekwondo, uh, and then I uh, stopped doing it when I was about twenty-two because uh, I was about four months away from going to the Joe Kubert School, huh. and I was sparring, and I landed on my elbow, and I couldn't mm. bend my elbow past this far for a while. I had to have a bunch of fluid drained out of my elbow uh, in order to get it to just bend again. Or, and it still, it still clicks when I do this. Uh, wow. But, you know, like I decided like, all right, I'm, I'm trying to start a career here. I should probably not risk any of my, you know, smart major limbs. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. I would just never imagine that like, you know why I stopped martial arts? Why? Comic books. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of, a lot of major action. things in my life have been upended because of comic books. So I, I, I took Taekwondo uh, amongst some, a bunch of other martial arts and that and the, and the, the master that I was working with, mm -hmm. he came to me once when we were doing knuckle push ups. Yeah. And he stopped me and he pulled me into his office and I was like, Oh, shit, what the hell did I do now? Because, uh -huh. you know, childhood guilt follows you around your whole life sure uh he called me in he said i'm an artist uh, i don't want uh -oh. to do ah uh, we lose him so no more Wait. hey laverne and, uh, you know, stuff laverne like laverne can you hear me yes all right take that to um yep. Yeah, you you just you cut out really funny there for a second. So take that to right when you uh, write the first thing he said when you were in his office. Oh, he he said uh, he said that um, I heard you were an artist. I don't think you should be doing the techniques that will injure your hands because you need your hands to do your work. And right. I was blown away. That's very considerate. Of him. Yeah, yeah, that's I, yeah. That's that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off like that with Laverne, but yeah, nobody no worries. Just, yeah. yeah. Why is the third episode a pain to edit? I, I think it might have been that way when in, in season one, too, funnily enough. But that's just kind of ironic, man. Have you guys ever gotten the editor notes that when you looked at them, you were just like maybe offended, slightly peeved off, like you know, something about it just 
like really got at your goal? Eh, like I'm, there have been, but like nothing. The way I look at it, when I'm working on uh, like properties and stuff like that, I tend to treat it like uh, I'm George Harrison. You know, you tell me what to play, I'll play it. And I'll rock the hell out of it. You know, like, that's fine. Like, at the end of the day, I don't own Star Trek, Godzilla, Ninja Turtles, whatever. Like, you tell me what you want to do with it, I'll do it. That's fine. When it comes to Heart Piercer and, like, create our own stuff, then I kind of become Paul McCartney. I think we're just seeing it a little bit. Um, which is, um, Should I make me John Lennon? Should I, like, be watching for, like... Yeah, 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 that's great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in real life i'm ringo but like yeah. <laughs> work um yeah like I, I, I turn into paul when on the on the creator own stuff just because like you know especially when we're we're ta dealing with uh it's our second colorist now that we're working with and i'm just sort of like well there's some stuff i want to change here here and here and it's not not that anyone's doing a bad job but i think it can just elevate it and keep things uh mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess the way I like to see books covered, I guess, <laughs> if I'm uh, doing it with Creator Own, because like I, I've, I've had some instances like on Creator Own stuff where uh, things have been approved that weren't ran by me, and then I was just like, then I turned uh -oh. into a maniac. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. For you, Rich? Uh, I mean, like for me, yeah. I mean, like I've gotten some notes that I don't necessarily agree with, and I, I definitely like agree with Gavin that like it's a different beast when I'm like working on a property or when I'm working on my own thing. Um, but I've kind of learned that it never hurts to like push back as long as you have like you can explain why you're pushing back. Mm -hmm. And like, um, you know, even with like a like a for hire job, it's like I always like come at it like like. I'll do this if you want me to, but I think we should think about it because like, have you considered X, Y, and Z? Like, um, you know, or like, I don't really agree with this. Can we try this instead? Like, like you know, I think I, I never try to come in it as like, like uh, being like, no, like what I wrote is perfect. And, you know, right. if you want to change it, like you're an idiot, go screw yourself, or you know, or, or <laughs> sorry, forgot we were keeping a PG. That's how you grow a career. Yeah, uh, y'all are know. terrible. Like, <laughs> look, I, I had two episodes. I try, not that... to come at it, I try not to come at it like like I'm right and you're wrong. I try to come in as like, okay, like you're seeing this issue. I don't necessarily agree with the solution you're proposing. Let me propose. This is what I would do to fix that issue, and then usually that's like well received where like to the point where um once we kind of like nail down what the issue is like what's behind the note like why is that note coming up we can come we can find something that uh, we both agree to you know it's like like anything like I, th I think like comics like one of the, my favorite things about it working in it is that it's like just such like a collaborative medium you know so it's like, um, you know, it, it gets to the point where like, I, I, like, and it, not just like writer, artist, colorist, letter, it's like, you know, you got to include like editorial in that too. You know, right. like everybody, I think when everybody's working together and everybody's working on making the book great rather than like pursuing like some kind of agenda to like, make themselves like stand out i think that's when like you you really get to like good stuff so it's like yeah yeah i, I feel like especially in this case with, with us working on heart piercer like uh connor our editor uh has just been like so helpful and so insightful and like yeah when, whenever we work with him i can tell this this isn't just another project on his slate he has an intimate knowledge of the material and uh ask like good questions deep questions about this lore we're building it's like okay is this the direction you want this to go and like uh which has been a real pleasant uh well i guess welcoming thing 
to have, think, uh, in the collaborative process. Yeah, I think that's very important, especially in the process of creating comics, because, I mean, you're right, you have people at so many different levels, and if if you get them all coordinated on the same thing, I do, I do think that's how you get some of the greatest of books, is when... You know, yeah. everybody is talking, everybody's taking everybody's input and, you know, no one's, no one's, uh, going, but, you know, like full blown diva, I'll say on anything, you know, and, and level heads can prevail to make the greater book. I do think that's a great yeah. thing within comic books. And I think that's something that honestly helps the comic book community be more positive as it is because without collective teams <laughs> you don't get no book for the most i mean for the most part not to say there aren't creators that don't that's their book and that's their book and and that's just that's it they might have paid a cover artist there's to do something like huh there's editors like that too yeah yeah yeah, I mean, there's editors that are, you know, really in their heart want to be writers and uh, mm -hmm. like to kind of uh, meddle a little bit. Um, but there's also editors who really do like, like I think Connor, our editor on this is a great example. It's like they're not looking to kind of like take control of the story. They're really just looking to make the story the best it can be and right using using their experience to kind of like he acts more and like ask questions yeah. and and the, like that's the thing it's like you know there's a difference between saying like this isn't clear or and this mm -hmm. isn't clear to me you know what i right. mean because it's like yeah it, it, it's sort of like this isn't like I don't understand why you made this choice. Let's talk it out so I can right. understand it. And then like and then maybe like we can figure out a way to to make it a little bit clearer because like really what like an editor is, it's like they're kind of like the first reader. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're like they're kind of like looking at it like, OK, like like if they're doing their job right, what they're what they're what they're looking at is like someone picks up this comic out of the blue, like someone's reading it for the first time, what's their reaction going to be? You know, they're like trying to like anticipate that. And that's something that I think it's easy for like me and Gavin or, or like any creator to kind of like lose sight of because you're so close to the material. You kind of like, it's hard to like look at it from a different perspective, but that's a big part of the editor's job is to try and look at things from the reader's perspective and be like, you know, this might be a little hard for them to get, or like, this might be a little awkward, or, you know, can you like make this sentence a little clearer, or can you make this drawing a little clearer, you know, like, you know, on the art side of things. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's vital. And then, hey, Laverne, man, I know, hey, everybody has diva moments, but you know, then there are divas and just, like, I know we, we all have deep moments, man. But like, if I would be amazed if there was a level within the industry that didn't have divas within it, like you know, from from any and everything. Like if there if there wasn't one or two divas in every category of comics, I would be slightly amazed. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure diva is the right word. I think you, you're looking for auteur. <laughs> well, it's like, I think if, if, if like, like what, I think what you're both kind of talking about is like, you do have people I'm sure that are like uncompromising in like every single aspect of every single project. And it's like, okay, but like that is a really to me that's like a really difficult person to work with yeah. and i don't want i don't want to be i don't want to be thought of as a difficult person to work with and i don't i mean i like i don't want to be difficult number one but i don't even want people to like kind of perceive me as like a difficult person to work with you know so it's right. like it's like um when there's something i feel really strongly about like I will absolutely like speak up and push for it and push to like make myself heard. But it's like, 
I'm not going to like micromanage every little thing yeah. that my collaborators do because it's like, because from my point of view, it's like, I, I, I trust them to like do the right thing. Like, like I love Gavin's art and I wouldn't have like asked him to do, to work on a book if I felt like I needed to like babysit every single like layout uh -huh. and every single line that he draws yeah. you know it's like i i feel like i trust gavin to like say like to like read the script and deliver something great and if there's something that i i don't like in something that he drew or something that i think could be different like we'll talk about it but mm -hmm. i'm not going to be like you know dude you got to redraw this uh with yeah. it's just like you know <laughs> and I, I think uh and, and we just have a i think we 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 just communicate pretty well in general. Yeah. Like I don't, so like we, it hasn't really been an issue yet that I can remember. Um and and like so um but uh I think going back to like I think just solving the problem I and and I guess going back to like good editors that part of the conversation. I remember when I was on Star yeah. Trek, I had a bit where uh Heather Antos got in touch with me and she was like hey, there's something about like these last two pages where there's just a beat missing and it's not your fault because you drew what was in the script, but we need to figure this out. Uh, it's kind of at this stage. And I was like, well, what if I just did this as an insert and threw it, you know, like I, we actually collaborated together to find the right answer without like really stepping on any toes of what the writers were doing or uh, that didn't affect the story so much. I mean, it's just uh, figuring out the best way to i guess get the point across that we're trying to get across and so, i'll, I'll and, tell you cut back to something you said a minute ago rich i'm curious when you're when you're working mm -hmm. with someone what's the most important thing to like their work or to like them <laughs> honestly wow. honestly i think it's it's to like them like uh -huh. like okay like we all want to work with like amazing people like amazingly talented people but like i would rather work with somebody who is like not like like i don't you know, want to work with somebody like bad but i would rather work with somebody who like was like perfectly competent and like great to get along with than somebody who's like uh some like wonderkind who was just an absolute pain and like yeah. every single thing was like a fight you know what i mean like like i don't like I'm, I'm saying like obviously there's like there's like a floor of like skill that you don't want to kind of go below but all all things being equal like yeah like just give me people that i love to work with that it's like a joy to create with like i'll take yeah. that every time over like you know the chance to work with like a, a diva or a prima donna who's like you know right. i don't know famous or, or whatever it is like yeah. but that's just me you know like I, I don't know no i agree like i mean it's it's funny because like maybe my answer 12 13 years ago before i got into the industry would would have been different was just like yeah i put up with mm -hmm. so and so even if they were a jerk or whatever but like now like i like uh i like working with my friends i like like uh or like people that I've met and that are cool because like, you know, then I get to go to conventions and stuff like Rich and I will probably, if we don't see each other sooner, we'll see each other in New York and we're just going to get together and we're going to like talk about what's next and we're going to get real geeky and real excited mm -hmm. and giddy and, you know, and like that's, that's the type of stuff that gets me really excited about. I'm about to go to Lexington this past weekend and uh, my buddy James Maddox is there and he uh, wrote Dead Legends, uh, which is the martial arts book I was talking about earlier. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get really excited and like giggling and talking about like you know whose face we're gonna kick off in the next arc whenever <laughs> I can get around to doing that again. But um, oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's just a matter of you know I like I like working with cool people. <laughs> yeah, so, I, haven't, I haven't I haven't been at any conventions in a long time, and that's the thing I really miss about it is is that uh, connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that and the free drinks. Yeah, 
I think I think another another thing is that it's like it's not that there aren't it's not that there aren't people who are like very very talented and very very skilled like above like other people but mm -hmm. it's like you know I think the like also like being in the business you just sort of realize that, like nobody gets there alone you know what I mean oh like, yeah yeah like everybody leans on like like you know great writers have their editors great artists have editors but also like other artists that like you know they bounce stuff off of and, and like it's like so there's really kind of, like in my mind there's really no i don't care how talented you are i don't care how skilled you are there's there's really no excuse for being like a jerk or like difficult to work with <laughs> especially like, i think of this like, industry too because yeah. like I, th I think there's like a weird like misconception of like fame in this industry. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you're not, the, most famous person, the most famous person in this industry is not that's famous. still alive. Yeah, that's yeah, still alive. Still alive. Might yeah, be you see, there was there was Robert Kirkman or Jim Lee, and yeah. I guarantee you, I could go say those names to my wife right now, and she'd look at me like I don't know who those guys yeah. are, and that's not. Well, it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what name for that? Uh, probably Jim Lee or Robert Kirkman or I guess even Neil uh, Gaiman, um, yeah. like Alan Moore, somebody like Alan, Alan Moore, maybe yeah. e any of those names I could say to my wife and she'd have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think that's the litmus test of really. Yeah, yeah. Because the only one, yeah. the only one that you could say to everyone, yeah, you, you don't meet the criteria of still alive, though he. <laughs> yeah. So. So, cause then that was only because, yeah, I mean, how many movies would that man cameo in? So, you know, yeah, and right. that's a, yeah, yeah. That's a very rare, I mean, Kirkman probably could have gotten that famous if he would have, uh, up cameoed in a bunch of walking dead shows. Yeah, maybe. yeah probably, but like, yeah. I, I think he's. No, no. I think all he's about just he like does, but he does, he doesn't have like know? a catchphrase like Excelsior or like, <laughs> you know, you, like have, that's what he's been missing. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys I, met Stanley? Uh, I, I've been in the same room as him a couple of times, but I never met yeah. him. Yeah. Like I've, I've been to like conventions that he was at and like seen him from like, you know, a right. distance, but not there, like. There, there was one time Maddox and I were hanging out at like Motor yeah. City in so Detroit. Who was, who uh, was, uh, oh. oh Laverne? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, sure. I was just going to say, uh, if, if, if Stan Lee wasn't the guy that you beat, beat your way across the floor to see, who, who would that person be then? Who, who would be the most famous? Or no. Well, no, like who? Who's who are the who are the uh, the who are you going to fanboy about at a convention? Are you going to rush over there to see oh, Jim Lee, oh, or is gosh. this going to be? Oh, I'm going to go. I mean, if I'm ever in the same room with him, it'd be Brian Bolland for me. Um, I'd uh, Bolland maybe. Uh, I don't know. That's the thing. I've met most of these guys now. Being in this, like Bolland might be the only one I've met. Um, you know, I probably would have geeked out. Oh, I'm trying to think. It's hard. I do a lot of these. Uh, like, I, I probably do, like, one every month or two. Uh, so, like, I see a lot of these guys around. So, it's like, you know, now I'm, now I know some of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe Balin's the only, only person I have on my list that I'd probably be pretty geeked out to me. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I definitely geeked out the first time I or the first two times really I, I, I met uh Robert Kirkman uh yeah it was like I was all like like uh it's one of those moments where like I look back and I'm like embarrassed at like how awkward I was because he was just like a very yeah. nice dude uh yeah. but um and I was probably just like blabbering and and just like totally nervous but um mm -hmm. I think like for me who would I who would I geek out over um even though I met him once, I'd probably still geek out over Grant Morrison. Oh, um, I would too. Yeah. I would geek out over Neil Gaiman. Um, like, uh, I would have said 
Jonathan Hickman, but I, I've met him a few yeah. times already. So we're, we're actually um, pretty cool. Um, but yeah. I kind of geeked out over Frank quietly when I met him, but then he was so cool and personable that we just yeah. ended up having real conversations. And I was like, oh, like, cool. We're actually, and then yeah. same with like St. Kevich. Like I sat next to him at a show uh, one time and like, I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. But then we're just sitting next to each other for four days or three days or whatever it was. And like, he was like borrowing art supplies off me and stuff. All weekend. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, cool. I just yeah, have to like, say. It's, it's like, you realize like everybody's human. Like they're just like people. Yeah, you know sure. I mean? And it's just like, you know, they're people that like love the same things that we do. And, and there's like, you know, yeah. there's. So you, uh, know, so, you know, Frank's real name. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I know that's a pen name, but yeah. <laughs> I, I just have to say, based on the way you phrased that question, though, Laverne, as far as who would you run across the convention floor to meet, I ran out the convention door to meet Stanley. Oh, wow. That's where he was, and I was like, I was fifteen, and I was like, I don't think I'm ever gonna have a moment like this again. So this is before he was surrounded at all you know you could yeah. walk up to yeah. him fairly and yeah so i ran out to get the convention door that i wasn't sure i could get back in at 15 years old <laughs> yeah. oh yeah the conventions oh. now are so different uh, um <laughs> when i was first going to san diego back in the 80s um i could i could go and didn't have uh, security guards on people there wasn't a green room that was just for i mean at some point, I expect they're going to say, well, this is the pencilers green room. You can't be in here if you're a writer. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, but but I could I could go in and and um, sit down. Uh, I think the first convention I was at the first day I was at a convention. I sat down with um, uh, Walter Koenig, you know, Chekhov from the original. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I sat down and we were just chatting and stuff like that. Uh, um, so it was a lot more open. Um, yeah. but it was, uh, it was, it was a few years before that happened. And I guess what it really changed was, uh, after image came out and that, mm -hmm. I mean, now, uh, um, I, it happens every once in a while. I've been at some conventions where it's a shared green room and I might end up, you know, going yeah. in and, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, sitting down with with um barbara eden or whomever the hell is in there. Sure. and and meeting people in that but uh um i've i've been lucky to, for some of that so i got you know when you get to sit down beside uh, and and chat with with uh, spock that yeah. was like you know totally going out and stuff like that for me yeah but yeah, there was, a... but I, I've, been, I've been lucky in meeting a lot of the guys. Like, have you uh, been up to, uh, to the offices to go into like DC and or, or whomever you're working with and and talk to people there? Or... I've 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 went to the DC offices when they were still in New York, um, but yeah, that's about it. I haven't been to any of the other offices or anything like that. But uh, yeah. The, at that time, like I met, got to meet like every single editor that was working for him. Yeah, that was like 2011. But yeah, well nowadays, oh, yeah, half but of them they aren't still have the. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like nowadays, I mean, like since the pandemic, like I think, like, uh, like now, um, there's still like a bunch of there uh, of editors at both places that are still like working remote, and it's like. It's, it's mm -hmm. just kind of like not the same as it was like before that, but even not the same like as it was like, yeah. you know, um, like years it's, ago. I mean, it's crazy how much that's changed just from first the internet being in a news and it made it to where it was way easier to collaborate with people that were all kinds of distances from you or in the case of me and Gavin, you know, within the same state, right. using the same comic yeah. store, you know, yeah. uh, which I still find amusing. Um, well, it's funny because, like, I, I, I initially moved back. I, like I said, I grew up in Indiana, but, like, when I was graduating Hubert School, there was a part of me that's like, man, do I have to stay in New York, like, out here to be in New York and get jobs? 
And, uh, well, you know, once I figured out I could do it remotely, I was just like, now I'm going back to where it's cheap. <laughs> so that's why I'm back in India. <laughs> Plan on staying for a while. I love your motivation. Like, this New York yeah. place is way too expensive. I'm I mean, I love back. New York. New York's great. Oh, it's like, crazy. I mean, I grew up there, yeah. so it seems normal to me. But, like, anytime yeah. I go anywhere else, I'm like, God, it's really expensive here. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I can only imagine, man. I don't want to, yeah, no, I don't think I want to live in New York from the things that I've heard, but just the fact that that's what got you back to the, but yeah, within that though, and the internet was introduced and then like, Rich, like you said, the pandemic happened and I think that got it to where even more people were working remotely and interacting with people online to a different level. What's your guys' opinion of, of seeing that change and that flip, you know, from, like, especially with you, Gavin, thinking, oh, do I have to stay in New York? And then realizing, oh, no, I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it made it easier for me to make a living at it this full time because of how of working remotely. Um, because like, A, because living here is much cheaper. But like, I think I may be after I graduated Qbert. I moved here and I worked as a waiter and then I worked for a newspaper doing graphic design. Um, like I was able to stop doing that within a year because I got my first comics job and uh, maybe I quit my real life jobs a little earlier than I should have, but like luckily it worked out. And I'm, you know, <laughs> I've got a roof over my head, so it's <laughs> turned out all right, but uh yeah, I, I, like, I mean, it's great that we can work. I mean, it's nice that I can send pages instantly. And I don't, I, I imagine, Laverne, you, you lived in or worked through the era of, you know, you got a FedEx pages that are still wet, you know? And, yes. Yes. Yeah. I remember uh, um, running through traffic to, uh, to get to the FedEx drop before six o'clock and, uh, yeah actually doing the you know the the uh, standard movie slide over somebody's hood yeah yeah yeah, they, yeah i thought i did really cool but the driver didn't seem too impressed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow and the and it wasn't just that it was like uh, uh my phone bill back then was probably over a thousand dollars a month oh wow so when yeah, I and, when long you know, like, is still a thing. Oh yeah. Like when I was yeah. uh first putting stuff together with some of the British artists in that too, with the uh the time change wasn't a big deal. What was the big deal was the phone bill. Wow, well, yeah. I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, now see I don't have any problem with the uh phone bill or getting in, in contact with people from, you know, all over the place, but then it's the time mm -hmm. zoning that I need to schedule to where we can conduct the interview that is a complete pain. So it's funny how much that's totally flipped, man, because it does become to the point where it's like, okay, well now I need to interact with you, but I need to be able to talk to you. You know, where we can have a conversation like this, but Oh, you're asleep when I'm not. And I'm asleep when you're in ah, crap. Mm -hmm. Cause <laughs> well, sometimes know, like, I'm asleep when Rich isn't, but that's just cause I'm, I work till like 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're well, on the I same mean, time zone. It's just yeah. like, <laughs> you ain't pulling no more forty-eight hour days nowadays, are you? I'm sorry. You ain't pulling no more forty-eight hour days nowadays, are you, Gavin? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I like sleeping too much. I like I like uh, being yeah. I like being married too yeah. much. I, I got a I got a question for both of you. Yeah. When was the moment when you were working that you went, "Oh my God, I'm I'm a professional now." Hmm. I, I'd I, say, I think, I think oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Rich, go ahead. Oh, okay. oh, you go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, I think uh, it was probably when I got my first like uh, paying job that someone like reached out to me about where I didn't have to like um, kind of like really hustle and hunt down like you know like like um because i had done like a couple of like uh licensed things where i was like you know bugging an editor like relentlessly until they were finally like all right fine you can write 
like a five pager or you can write like whatever it is. And, and like, and I was very proud of it and very happy that that stuff happened, but I felt like, um, you know, I really had to like hustle hard to get it. But, um, I think like for me, it was like the first time I just sort of got like a cold email from like an editor just being like, Hey, uh, read your work and I really like it. And would you be interested in working on this? Um, that 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 was like the moment where I was like, oh, okay, like, like people are starting to notice, like I started to feel like I kind of belong here that I'm not like, kind of like pushing my way in the door, you know what I mean? Um, so I think that was, that was kind of like the, the big moment for me where it just sort of like, yeah, like I felt like a turn to page almost. Yeah. I got, well, I got a job. Uh, it was, I want to say, yeah, it was, yeah, it's out. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it, uh, it, it's uh, a story that I, uh, it's, it was um, the Wastelanders uh, Star-Lord story that I did um, for Marvel. Um, it was for, it was a, a podcast tie-in so it's like but it was like old man star lord basically like kind of like the world of like old man wolverine uh but it was like uh the editor this guy uh, mark basso really great guy one of my favorite people uh working at marvel right now um but i had been like on him for like months and just sort of been like hey do you have anything nothing 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 and then i was just sort of like all right well you know i guess I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll stop because I'm, I'm tired of like hearing no. So I'm just like, you know, I'm going to give a break of like, you know, like reaching out. And then like, I think maybe like three or four months after that, he just emailed me and was like, Hey, do you want to work on this? And I was like, yes, yes, right. I do. I actually like, I actually had to stop myself from emailing him back like five minutes after I got the email. So I do that I all the time. Like, I was like, I was like, I don't want to like, it's it's like that whole kind of like thing with like with like dating like you don't want to like seem too eager <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, right. I was like i was like you're gonna write him back today you're gonna, you're gonna take an hour like two hours like just like sort of sit with this feeling feel good about it and you're gonna write him back but don't like you know <laughs> You don't want to seem desperate, you know, but, but it was that, like, that backfired yeah. on me one time where really? I was just like, all right, I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play it cool. And I'm going to like, wait a little bit. I'm like, like, I got the email in the morning. I'm like, all right, I got to email him back in the afternoon. And apparently when I went, it was for like this, uh, uh, web comic called the gutters that was coming out for a while. That was like a commentary on the comic book industry. Uh -huh. And like, it was always like a one-off one page job. And, uh, they offered me, uh, this was around the time that like, Snyder's uh Batman Superman were coming out like they revealed like what Batman was going to look like and stuff they wanted me to do like a parody of that or something like that and they're like hey do you want to do this and I was like all right cool like it's gig but like I'll just email them this afternoon and then I missed the job by like a half hour apparently oh, they needed wow. an answer that day so like they right. had kids, hired someone else so I was like all right whatever they ended up hiring me for something else later but it was like kind of funny that it like mm -hmm. you know gonna let them sweat a little bit then <laughs> got me uh but to answer, answer your question the i, I kind of have like a, a three-parter um to this um uh, one i think was when i first quit my job i was saying earlier when I, I i was working on this book uh i got asked to work on this book called the accelerators and uh it was it was a great book and it was i did like 20 issues of it eventually but um I think at the time it, I was professional enough to quit my job and make this independent book um, for however many years that I worked on it. And uh, second time where I felt like it's shift was when I got Star Trek because it was the first major property I got. And that was only like three years ago. And I noticed a significant shift uh, in the way that people talk to me um and i guess yeah i started asking me about my work and it, it was very different vibe i started getting from people at conventions especially from people i'd known for a long time 
I was like, oh, now he's a Star Trek guy, like, you know, that sort of thing. Um, uh, and then Turtles even up that ante a lot higher. Uh, well, but I think like another major one kind of happened about six months ago where like kind of the same thing where uh, an, e an editor I hadn't worked with emailed me out of the blue, never met him before, never heard of him. And then they asked me if I wanted to, to do the Godzilla covers. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, people are really starting to notice now and uh that that was a really cool moment too that's a fun one now too right now as far as godzilla with the new godzilla versus kong or godzilla x kong a new empire I gotta say we got alan henry coming up here real soon who does a lot of work as far as bringing king kong to life in that film uh he'll be coming up real soon here in just a few episodes <laughs> i just I, I had to bring that up with you bringing up Godzilla, man. Yeah, yeah. But I'm but I'm still a firm believer, and so is he, that in a real like fight between those two, if it's just them two and that's all it is, and just a bunch of land that the ape just loses. Well, he doesn't have atomic breath, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's as well as you can touch him. Yeah, that's that's my that's that was the whole point everyone made. It's like you know. Like unless you like you have to give King Kong like a plasma gun for that to yeah. be a fair fight. It just it just don't work any other way because but yeah. I have like a funny I, I just I just finished working on um I doing the Mecha Godzilla 50th anniversary comic. Um so it's like Mecha Godzilla versus Godzilla in like a few different iterations. Um but one really funny just side note was like when I was working with the editor, I was like, I was like, so do you guys have like a standard sound effect for Godzilla's roar? Like, you know, because I can I can think of like 20 different ways to like <laughs> to write. How do you make that onomatopoeia? How do you yeah. write that down? I was like, you know, like, is there like a consistent thing? So like it's it's uh, funny you say that because like I, I'm I'm writing uh and drawing an eight-page turtle script and I kind of have a monster that erupts and i was trying to think of what that yeah. that like sound is because i wanted something like that for godzilla it's apparently it's uh screonk oh yeah okay that works Skrionk. yeah i don't know <laughs> like, i might i might hand load cool. that into the lines yeah. <laughs> make sure you get through. i love I, that I, they uh, have a... i was i got to play around with with some some of those sounds like that when I was working, uh, when I was writing Tarzan, mm -hmm. because um, he speaks ape English, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does that sound like? Yeah. Well, they've, they've got an ape English dictionary of, oh, of words like, Sorry. oh, yeah, uh, Burroughs wrote it years ago. But, wild. but it, it's like when he goes to attack somebody, uh, there's a there's a uh, a thing he says that's bundulo like b u n d o l o, mm -hmm. and I thought there's no way in hell an ape could make that sound. So I yeah. thought, but what would be the approximation of it? So I started. I found when I was doing that, I was just just dropping most of the vowels. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. Just think of think of it. I mean, it's like. Have, you guys have all heard the dog on on the internet uh, saying "I love you." Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. So I was just going there. It was, yeah. That was that was a lot of fun. Nice. I think that's an intriguing part people don't think about a lot too in comics when you actually have to go about writing out sounds that just are typically heard. You know what I mean? Like, how do you? How do you like like that? How do you script out Godzilla's roar the way Tarzan speaks, or like just yeah. random, random verbiage that people would make up? Because there's so much, and there's so many different ways to interpret it. Like you know Laverne's last name that I can't get right for my life. I love you, man. Um, yeah. What, what uh, do you do? You enjoy doing the uh, sound effects yourself, Gavin, or do you leave that entirely up to the uh, artist? Man, the I, I I I really do like it. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm stepping on people's toes, though. If I if it's something the letter 
uh, uh so like create our own stuff i'll try to do it myself i actually kind of left it alone a little bit in art piercer um and i've only done it like maybe two or three times while working on turtle stuff uh except for like the script that i'm writing and drawing myself because you know I'm not, I'm not making too many people mad. Uh, I don't even know who the letter is supposed to be on the, the, the project I'm writing. So well, I think you have to do all the lettering yourself now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, in the, in the script I wrote, I, I specifically wrote down, like, I think, like, you know, he falls into this vat of ooze. So, like, I wrote sploosh you know, or something like that. But the sploosh is going to be made out of, like, the ooze kind of coming up. So I was like, I'll handle this one, but I write that into the script. Like, I've got this one. Don't worry about it. Um, so that way I know for a fact I'm not stepping on anyone's toes because I'm told them. I'm yeah, yeah I, I ask because uh, I because I know a lot of uh, a lot of other guys like to do that. They they might leave all of the captioning and, and word balloons and stuff like that mm -hmm. to the letterer, but they want to do all of the um, sound effects and, uh, yeah. and and a lot of the splash lettering. Mm -hmm. and like especially like like i could have fun with it too like i'm doing and i've done it in a one book where i have someone like getting thrown through a window and then i'll spell out crash with a broken glass stuff like that just like i try to have more fun with it and like it's like i don't think they could do that as well like a like a, a letter would do that as well as i'm going to do it with if uh they were asked to um but if it's like more of like a typical sound effect, like someone like a crack or a biff, pow, whatever, like, mm -hmm. so like stuff like that, you know, I'll leave them for them. How much control do you take over the, the letter of red? Um, like, again, I think it all just goes back to like, I, I'm a big proponent of letting people do their jobs and like only trying to work with people who I am confident they can do it well. So. I really don't try, I try not to like kind of stick my nose in um, on that end of it. Like I'll, I'll, um, I'll definitely like write out the sound effects. Uh, but if I write an arg with like four R's and they put in three, like I'm not going to argue. <laughs> what's, <laughs> you know, what's the weirdest sound effect you've ever written? Um... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds I've like done... it's good. Yeah, I, I did one, one my favorite one, I'll just say this, was uh, in, in the martial arts book, I have, a, in one fight, I have a, the main bad guy gets a guy down, and he's just like, stomping the hell out of him, like, just like, boom, 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 and so I just wrote stomp, 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 over and over again, but in like, different various ways like some were in bold some were like real scratchy some were real clean some were like whatever and like and it took up the whole panel uh that was a fun one nice i guess like for me like the one that i remember the most is uh for this book i did called wailing blade like the whole idea was uh the reason it's called the Wailing blade it's like this sword like whenever it's used in combat it makes this like really high-pitched wailing sound so we would start it really small and then like I think one of the things like it really like again like just sort of like took over the panel and it was like like in the first couple of panels it's like e like really like low and then like it gets like big until it's like and it's like framing framing the panel like we had it like we had it running across like two rows of like a double page spread so it was like it was pretty intense yeah all i know all i know is with the way how oh, yeah. this particular quest is gone as far as it started with just me and Gavin, and Rich pops in and Vernie pop in and all this. I feel like I need to assemble the PanCon with two more individuals and we're just going to talk some random subject with, with all of us. And we're going to make sure it starts at, you know, with all of us. Because I know it might have been a little bit of a screw ride for all y'all out there watching with boom and boom and boom. And hopefully I got that all edited nice and smooth and it wasn't, though I'm wrong, you know. And nobody you know. noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody noticed except for the fact that I'm saying at the end of the interview that it happened. <laughs> you know, that'd be funny if I made it completely to where it wasn't obvious and then I just pointed out myself. I would do that. You ever find yourself pointing, doing that, like pointing out your own mistakes to someone else within your own work? No, I think oh, you yeah. have to point your own mistakes. But go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, you know, it's like all the time. I think we're all, or at least I am, like my own 
harshest critic just because it's like there's definitely things that like I've pointed out where like uh, people were like if you hadn't said something I would never have known <laughs> and that, that's like the funniest part yeah so, like, pretty much yeah I got, I got a gif I got a gif and quote about that he told me that when he made a mistake that he would he would pony that that sucker out like he was the proud papa Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all like i meant what well, so he steve urkel did it ostensibly and was like i meant to do that <laughs> <laughs> oh there was there was some fun play like when we did the trencher christmas special um uh, it was uh it was so late that we had the old year on it and then crossed out with the new year written down mm -hmm. Like it had, it had missed one year. Mm. It was fun. <laughs> that's nice. I think that's an important thing about comics too to remember that the, that the key thing is they are supposed to be fun, entertaining, and for enjoyment. Like you know Absolutely. what I'm saying. I mean, there, there's uh, so many great stories out there that you can check out. May fifteenth, you've got Heartbreaker dropping from Rich and Gavin. There's links in the description to where you can find all kinds of stuff from Rich and Gavin as well as Laverne. Who's, what did you say? You got something coming out here soon, Laverne? Oh, uh, just the, the next book. And what the the book I colored was was Satan's Swarm coming out of Dark Horse. I don't know when that's coming out. And I just uh, I just sent in the uh, script for the uh, dialogue on my sixth uh, uh, book in the Shame series. So it's, uh, uh, I'm waiting to hear back from the editor. Nice. So there's things in the works over here, ladies and gentlemen. You can find everything you need in the description as far as to find all that work. And like I said, I'm going to get all these gentlemen back on the show at some point in some collaboration. Laverne will be back as a co-host. Thanks, Laverne, for jumping in with this rotating co-host, man. I'm loving it. It's It's gone phenomenal, even when some people are late, but it's okay. Children happen sometimes. And in all honesty, Laverne, when you jumped on, I was... I was happy to hear that it was a tech issue and you were okay. And it wasn't I, I, something else stupid, like somebody's wife know, getting I, sick or somebody's I kid. Believe, yeah. I believe I resemble that remark. <laughs> Sometimes you resemble remarks, man. I try to keep them unoffensive though, because I love it. And I love you all checking this out over here. So for that, I want to show y'all to do three things. Right? One. Definitely. Oh, you know, no, hold on, hold on. I about Gavin. Yeah, Rich, I about forgot to do it to him. It's the end of the show, Rich. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I about forgot to do it to him. Because if you want to know how to torture Rich, go back to his first question. You can totally find out how to oh, okay. either either you can either find out how to like if you see Rich, you can find out how to do make him ha a happy dude, right? Or you can find out how to just instantly <laughs> just get under his gall to where it's like, it's this guy don't get away from my table, right? So, let's find out what that is for Gavin, right? So, so for Gavin, I'm assuming you'll always yeah. take a good cup of Joe, Gavin, right? Right? Uh -huh. So you can always, if he's in a con, just show up at a good But if you really, really want to surprise him, right? I want you to send him that unicorn Rich made him kill. <laughs> All right, with some spicy Cuban from Pavana Cubano in Indianapolis. Pavana Cubano, yeah. All right, that one, and just yeah, a, a bunch of candy bars, except no mounds or almond joy, and a bunch of those old school Ninja Turtle toys. Right, <laughs> right. That's how you just make Gavin's day. Now, if for some reason you just ha haven't like enjoyed Gavin during this particular quest, right? What I want you to do is send him that same unicorn that Rich made him kill. Use it twice. <laughs> oh, but whatever, right? With a Rachella Sal sandwich? Rachella. Uh, Rachella, man, whatever. Rachella, okay, a Rachella sandwich. 
It's that uh-huh. cheese, right? It's like a. It's the like melted a, knife melted cheese. cheese. Yeah. My okay. my, my wife and I with, went with her family. I guess my family technically, but uh, we went with family to like this like Oktoberfest thing on the north side of Indianapolis, and like they were making it, and it's like the most disgusting smell ever. And then my father-in-law bought me one and like had me try it, and I just almost threw up. Okay, so. Wild. So like a bunch of bite. those sandwiches and a bunch of coleslaw to force feed him. And then for dessert, a bunch mm-hmm. of mounds and almond joys. And then if you just <laughs> want to top it off, throw him to Earth One, because I don't think he'll enjoy it as much as he thinks he would. I just think mm-hmm. it would go really bad to be a regular person there. But again, that's just if for some reason, you know, Gavin's not, you, know, you haven't enjoyed it. If you haven't enjoyed Laverne, or Rich, go check out their quest. If you haven't enjoyed me, you can actually go check out my questionnaire on the Patreon and figure that out. And that's kind of unnerving. But beyond that, I just want you all to do three things. Like I said, one, go click all those links in the description. Go check you out some phenomenal work from some phenomenal creators. Two, give it that thumbs up, right? Three, all you metahumans and mutants out there, have a good night, y'all. We're listening to the questionnaire. Say that again. You're listening to the questionnaire. You've just started right here for your ears, for your eyes. The questionnaire. Get your comic on. Poke it out, poke it out, poke it out, poke it out.